right, here is another comment left under my one of my videos. He says, uh, if you look at the poor people, the very poor people in Indian Africa, their diet is predominantly based on carbs, and still they don't get insulin resistance. He says insulin resistance is a problem of overconsumption and obesity. In other words, you eat too much, you get too fat, and there you go. But he says if you go to these poor countries in Africa and India and so forth, they eat lots of carbs and they don't get diabetes. Well, that might have been true 100 years ago. It's not true today. Diabetes is raging in India. It's all over the place, and it is so in Africa. I mean, I found that out personally with some of Benedict's family, and we did some, a blood sugar test. We had a meal, and I convinced most of them <laughs> to let me stick their fingers and give them a blood sugar test. And we had uh, one that was slim even and had uh, quite high blood sugar and had not even eaten that day up until then. But diabetes is, uh, is raging in Africa, raging in India. And a lot of people will say, yeah, but in Japan, they eat rice like crazy and they don't get diabetes. Yeah, they do. The old notion that Japanese don't get diabetes. Yeah, that would have been true 100 years ago. It is not true today. And there are a lot of reasons for that. But let's go back 100 years or 125 years to where Japanese did eat quite a bit of rice. And they did not get diabetes. And yes, that was the case at one point. Well, there are reasons for that. And one of the big reasons is, and it kind of goes with what this individual is saying, they did make rice a big part of their, their daily diet even 100 years ago. But they ate small portions. And they were skinny. People were not very big. A hundred years ago, if you look at pictures of crowds, even in America, we were so much slimmer even 60 years ago than we are today. There were just not that many obese people. Yeah, there were some, but not many. So the idea of the Japanese getting away with eating rice, well, here's a, uh, a small Japanese person who is thin and their amount of rice they eat is about the size of your fist and then they have a few vegetables maybe a tiny little bit of fish, and there's their meal. They're eating a very low-calorie, small-portion meal, and they're not eating any sweets. In those days, 100 years ago, number one, there were hardly any sweets around. There was no soda. There were no candy bars. And yeah, there were such a thing as uh, some sweet treats that people could make, but the poor people, they didn't hardly have sweets at all. Maybe an occasional fruit in season was about the extent of their sweets. So the idea that, well, all throughout Africa, they hardly get diabetes. Well, that's completely wrong. I know that for a fact. And in India, I've been there too. I don't know as much about India from personal experience, but from what I've read, there's lots of diabetics. And in fact, the man that is the host uh, has been the host of my India meetings. I, I don't go there anymore, but I did for some years. And uh, there was a man that hosted us. Both he and his wife were both diabetic and are still diabetic. So India is full of diabetics. America is full of diabetics. Africa is full of diabetics. Mexico is full of diabetics. I mean, you're finding them everywhere. You can hardly go anywhere where there just aren't very many diabetics. It just, it just hardly happens. And speaking of poor people, diabetes is a prosperous, kind of a prosperous person's disease. But you may say, yeah, but you just said there's a lot of diabetics in Africa. Well, even the Africans of today, though they might not look prosperous, many of them, by American standards, by the standards of Africa 65 years ago, they're very prosperous. They're living at a much higher level. They're eating far more sweets and they're much more obese. And if you don't believe that, just go to Africa and take a look around. A lot of obese people in Africa, a lot of obese people in India. I mean, Americans do not have a patent on obesity and on sweets and sweets are everywhere. There's all these little shops in Africa, the marketplace. Africans don't normally go to a Walmart. In fact, I don't know if there's a Walmart in the whole of Africa, but that's not the norm. You go to the market, 
which everybody puts up a tiny little shop. And there are sweets everywhere. You can get sweets. There are little stands along the road where you can get sweets. So uh, it's not what you think. All right, well, this one is not a comment. This is uh, what I want to share right now. I share a lot of comments, but this one is actually a, uh, a, a what, well, what's called a medical milestone. Someone sent me a link to a video about a surgery done in China that turned a diabetic who needed insulin into a non-diabetic who did not need insulin. So I looked at the video, I, I found an article, and uh, I've got a couple of, um, of uh, well, I've got a, something that was written in the India Times, and they write this, in a significant medical milestone, Chinese scientists have successfully cured a patient's diabetes using a groundbreaking cell therapy, and I don't claim to understand it fully, but it has something to do with you might say reverse engineering cells and beta cells and then retransplanting them, if I understand it right. So anyway, they went through this cell transplant in July 2021. Within 11 weeks, this man no longer required external insulin. Over the next year, he gradually reduced and ultimately stopped taking oral medications. His blood, uh, his blood sugar control was almost normal. Follow-up examination showed the, blood, the patient's pancreatic islet function was effective, effectively restored. The patient has now been insulin-free for 33 months, so almost three years. Well, that's fantastic. I you know, thank God that they've come up with this. And, it, I, I, and I don't know whether that can work for type 1s or that can only work for type 2s that barely have pancreatic function or both. But that's a great blessing, and I'm all for it. But there is a caution to that, and, and the caution is this. It's not quite as great a news as you might suppose. Now, if you're type 1 and you can get restored pancreatic <laughs> function, uh, you're saying, yeah, Dennis, that is a great, uh, that is a great uh, breakthrough. And it is. It really is. But here's the deal. If you're a type 2 and you have over the years, destroyed your pancreas with a terrible diet, and um, you're overweight. And so, over the years, the pressure of that terrible diet, the pressure of being obese all these years, has eventually destroyed your pancreas. And let's say you get this surgery, and now your pancreas is fixed, and the, you've got some beta cells that actually work again. Well, praise God, but guess what? If you don't make any changes... You're going to destroy the new beta cells because beta cells don't live, don't thrive, don't do it all well, and can barely survive in an atmosphere where you've got hyperinsulinemia and insulin is just surging around them, forcing them to pump and pump and pump and produce more and more insulin. So if you're someone who's destroyed your pancreas and you go to the doctor and say, I want this new surgery, and right now it's just like an experimental stage. It may be years before it becomes common. But let's say it does become common and you go to the doctor and he gives you the surgery. And then you just keep eating like you did before. Keep living like you did before. You're still just as obese as you ever were. Those new beta cells... <laughs> Uh, they're not going to make it either, uh, eventually. They're, now, this one lived 33 months. I mean, the pancreas worked for 33 months, so that's great. But eventually, it's going to take a toll on them as well. So there is a limit to what anybody can do if they say, what we don't want is to change our diet. Show me a hack. And I'm always a little nervous over the idea of diabetic hacks. Well, if you just change the order of your food, everything will be fine. You can still eat all the junk you ever did, but just change the order a bit and you'll be fine. Or you can still eat starches, but you better heat them up and cool them and heat them up and cool them. Or you can still eat starches, but you better eat a little bit of vegetable first and wait 15 minutes and eat another part of your meal. Wait 15 minutes, eat another part of your meal. Or you can still eat the junk, but just have a little... Apple cider vinegar, apple cider vinegar before you eat your standard junky, trashy meal. I'm not saying hacks cannot do some good in blunting spikes. Or some people just say, well, if you eat enough fat, the spike won't be quite as high. That's true too. But you still got problems. And 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 most 
diabetics' problem is not that they just ate fat or just ate carbs. Most diabetics started out eating lots of fat and lots of carbs and lots of fat and lots of carbs. That's the standard diet. A lot of fat, a lot of carbs. And it leads to misery. So this idea that I can just use a hack or I can just use a surgery, some people go for bariatric surgery, and that will fix things. But, uh, and it will for a while. But eventually, you're going to end up eating more and more, and, and it'll be almost as though you never had it. So don't just depend on hacks. As for some people, the idea of changing their diet is unthinkable. I'm not going to change my diet. I want to eat just like I always did. When I was 22, I ate junk. When I was 35, I ate junk. I'm now 65. I'm, I still want to eat junk. Show me a hack. Yeah, I'm going to eat my junk, but I'll take a little apple cider vinegar first. Or I'm going to eat my junk, but I'll have my salad first. Then I'll eat my junk, my trash, my standard American diet. And to them, the idea of not eating the way they used to when they were 25 is unthinkable. I don't want to hear it. No, don't tell me that I have to actually change my diet. Yes, my friend, if you want to live happily ever after and see old age and watch your children have their children, your grandchildren, and be healthy into your 70s and 80s, well, number one, you need the grace of God. And number two, you need to quit overdosing on the carbohydrates. So thank God for the surgery. I hope it does become useful and productive, especially for type 1s. A lot of type 1s, they eat pretty good. But they had this autoimmune disease that destroyed their pancreas, their, their beta cells. And uh, you can't really blame it on their diet in many cases. Benedict and I do have another YouTube channel besides Beat Diabetes. I'm talking about our Bible teaching channel. On this channel, we usually have three different types of Bible studies posted every week. On Mondays, I do a video devotional, which is a short talk about various Bible topics, normally lasting about eight minutes. On Thursdays, you can see Benedict and me sitting around our dining room table studying the Bible together. And usually, a couple of other days in the week, we post audio podcasts. There's no video connected with these. They are strictly audio only, which means you can listen to them as you go for a walk, drive in your car, or prepare your meals. There's nothing to look at, but plenty to hear. So check out our Bible YouTube channel, which goes by my name, Dennis Pollock. A link to this channel is in the description.